Are you a real estate investor looking to sharpen your skills or a newbie looking to become one? You're in the right place. Welcome to Where Should I Invest? Real Estate Investing in Canada with your host, Sarah Larby. Mark Loeffler, welcome to the show. How are you? Very good. How are you doing? Good, good. We uh, we somewhat reconnected actually at CrossFit. <laughs> and yeah, I we did. We, we, we missed you at back squat day. Oh, so I started joining um, CrossFit in Oakville and it's actually like, it's a different workout than F45 and I really, I do F45 every single day, but it's a good, like it's challenging. Like you're doing these like push-ups on your head, which I've never even heard of before. <laughs> Handstand push-ups, yep. Oh, man. How long have you been doing CrossFit for? Uh, I've been doing CrossFit on and off for probably about 10 years. Okay. All right. Nice, nice. Yeah. It's, uh, I, could, I could see why people are in shape that do it. It's definitely a lot of work. Well, yeah. Well, I, I just like that it's constantly different. Mm -hmm. Like you show up and every day and they, they do three month rotations. So you've gone through this big rotation and then you come back and you're like, oh, it's like a brand new thing, right? I've gone to gyms before and it's like, okay, the same workout every time, even with a trainer. Yeah, I, so I agree. Get, I get bored. Same, same. I remember, were you there the one day that they had us run a mile and then do a hundred burpees and then run the other mile? Like that was like, I came back home and I was like, I got to take a nap. <laughs> that well those workouts are my jam like that's yeah. that's like i crush those ones oh uh, yeah yeah you, you do some running don't you i do some running i do some i do a lot of cardio so nice nice awesome so we are not here to talk about fitness though i'm sure it's both of our passions in some some way or another um but let's talk about real estate let's talk about you let's talk about real estate investing uh i believe right. you're also a realtor with a lot of experience but let's uh let's go back to you know how you got started and what did you get started at as you start with uh, being a realtor or an investor no i was an investor uh so i started about 20 years ago i guess um somewhere around there and i started buying duplexes in newmarket ontario i did five percent down um with cmhc and three and a half percent cash back. And I bought my first three properties that way. So two in Newmarket, one in Toronto, and basically bought shitty properties and did the work myself. And uh, yeah, that's how I got started. And then I started buying Cornwall and Hamilton. And at some point it was like, oh, well, oh, and then I got into a few, doing a few rent to owns, wrote a book about that, started doing courses on rent to owns and then sold the company the rent to own company. And then that's when I got my license. Interesting. So, I mean, I think there's, there's definitely pros and cons uh, to, to being a realtor, but I think, you know, knowing the investment world already and being in it, I'm sure that opened a lot of doors uh, to create a niche, you know, in, in catering to helping other investors. Oh, hundred percent. It, it was, yeah. I mean, I, I had a good network when I got my license and there was no other people in that network that were doing Hamilton uh, real estate and, with my background, with, you know, the work I'd done before it, it was, yeah, I, I, I mean, I really enjoyed it. I still enjoy helping people buy houses mm -hmm, absolutely. or buy investment properties. Right. So, so you work out of, is it the Oakville KW? Yeah. I work out of the Oakville KW. It's like two minutes from my house. Nice. So, nice. And, it. It, and it's pretty central. Keep, keep, keep it local. Yeah. That's it. So, okay. So let, let's, let's talk about, you know, like, obviously you've done, uh, you know, a lot of, of work. And I think you're in some multifamily stuff as well. And you're buying some much bigger things, you know, today. How did that, you know, pivot? So from like your first handful, because there's a lot of people probably listening to this, they're like, okay, well, I have four, like, how do you get to that next one? And they just, you know, there's at some point it does skyrocket, but it's, it's that, you know, one, two, three properties and, and being able to, to scale it. Like, what was it for you? So I think I had like eight or nine, uh, like try duplexes to fourplexes and it was I couldn't get financing like I was just horrible for financing I just couldn't get it like I had, I had good income as a realtor but it was self-employed and you know they, they tightened things up at one point and I was like ah oh, screw this so I'm like okay I'm gonna go commercial and of course you know I'm not normal I don't just go buy like a, a an apartment building that's gonna cash flow I bought an 18 unit vacant building that was condemned <laughs> that's my favorite <laughs> yeah 
Uh, so I bought an 18 unit vacant building for $600,000 in Hamilton, nice. Nice. Uh, put a million dollars into it and then refinance that right into CMHC. Very cool. Can I ask what the ARV after repair value was at the end? Yeah. So I think at that point it was like 2.3 and now the building's, I don't know, 4 million ish. Nice. Nice. So yeah. did you do that building by yourself? Did you bring in partners? Um, no, I brought it. I brought in partners. So I had JV partners on that. Uh, then I bought like another 19 unit. That was a shithole crackheads, all that fun stuff. Um, and that's actually after I bought a couple other things in, in there as well with other partners. I found one uh, partner who um, you know, had a little bit more money. And then I figured out that, yes, I was getting incredible lift off those, uh, but they were a lot of work. And, you know, managing them after, because they were um, wood framed, you know, there was always more tenant turnover. So that's when I started buying concrete uh, buildings in Hamilton. Okay. So, so they were a little nicer buying. I, I bought, I paid a little bit more, but they were easier to manage after. Right. For sure. So it sounds like now, okay. So before you bought these commercial uh, properties, were your triplexes, duplexes, your, you know, first eight, were they strictly yours or did you bring in partners on those two? Some of them were just mine. Some of them were partners. Okay. So do you find that like maybe the, the scaling part happens with partnerships, joint ventures, whether, you know, you know, you're the active partner or the passive partner that that's what helped you scale? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, I don't, I wouldn't have been able to do like an 18 unit vacant building on, on my own at that point. Um, but it's funny, like you come full circle. So I sold seven buildings in Hamilton two years ago and I pivoted out to Alberta. And honestly, I don't think now that I'm actually gonna take on any new partners um, on any of my stuff in Alberta. I own some of it 100%, some of it like only 95%. Like mm -hmm. um, so I think anything new, I'm just gonna, do from my own resources. Yeah. And then, you know, just to add to that, and I think it is interesting. So you, you start, you know, you might start with one or two by yourself. You might say, okay, I'm going to bring somebody to bring the financing or the money for the next one. You might do another one by yourself. And then at some point you decide to, you know, if you want to scale bigger, unless your pockets are really deep, but as, as many people are starting out, they're probably not, um, you're bringing in partners. And then once you sell those then you take your portion of that cash to invest in your own stuff, which actually I think is actually a very good way to do it. Um, it's easier to own, uh, you know, by yourself, of course. Um, however, it's not always feasible to, you know, get to the scale uh, and the level without bringing in, whether it's private money, lenders, JVs, partners, um, and, you know, and have an exit where then you can take that money and, and acquire on your own. Yeah, like I would never, like I wouldn't have, I had almost 180 units in Hamilton at one point. I still have a couple of buildings there. Um, there's no way I'd be over 200 units in Alberta right now if I didn't actually bring in other money too, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it, it does help. It's just at some point it's like, okay, when's enough enough? Yeah, when is enough enough? I don't know. Well, I, I, I'm a bit of a collector, right? So I'm just going to keep <laughs> collecting. Uh, but I have made the rule. I'm not buying anything this year. I just need to get, um, you know, a lot of property sorted out and, and just move those forward and get those all refinanced. And then I'll look at it and say, okay, where are we? What have we done? What, what do we need to do? And then, uh, what can, what can I buy in the future? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So you're, you're not buying anything currently. Um, I think many people are also waiting on the sidelines. Uh, and well, I, I know you've, that's you've... Not the reason I'm waiting on a sideline. I actually, we're, we're just closing on a 10 unit in London right now. Nice. Uh, literally tomorrow. Yeah. Um, no, I, I didn't so, mean you were waiting on the sideline. I mean, I think there's a lot of investors out there that are, are waiting on the sidelines, but um, you know, you're, yeah. you're seeing deals come in and out. And um, I think in the last like two years, there's a lot of people that got in over their heads buying these crazy expensive properties. And, you know, now they're, they're trying to mitigate their risk and the downside and potentially sell. So um you know, like obviously you've got, you know, properties that you're probably stabilizing as well. Um, and congrats on the, yeah. on the 10 plex. But I, I guess where I was going with that is, you know, as a broker, realtor, 
um, what's, you know, what makes sense still today that you're seeing come through? Uh, like, I still like the Ontario market. Um, I think there's a fundamental real estate problem in Ontario where they're going to bring in how many people a year, 300, 400, 500,000 people a year. Um, and number one, th there's no political will to build enough housing for them. Number two, I don't think we actually have enough people in the trades to go and build all those houses anyways. If there was the land and the will uh, to go to go do any of that, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I mean, I think in, in five years, rents are going to be up from where they are today and values are going to be, you know, if not up, then similar. Um, but I, I do believe there's, they're going to be up because again, you increase demand, but don't increase supply. It's yeah. a pretty simple uh, mathematical equation. Uh, I, and I still like Alberta. Um, I think Alberta is going to lead the country in economic growth in the next five to seven years. I think they're going to diversify away from oil a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to be a good long-term hold from now. Um, so, I mean, we just closed a 90 unit in October and that's really why I'm not buying anything. Nice. I've got to get that settled and, and figured that out, but who knows, maybe I refinance that in like September, October, and then I'm back buying. Um, but this, that's, this 90 yeah, unit is in Alberta. It's in Alberta. It's Edmonton. Yeah. Okay. All right. And how did you acquire that one? So partners, partners in my own capital. Got it. Got it. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So you found it on market or off? I mean, most stuff out there is, is off, but it was listed with a realtor, right? So mm -hmm. uh, listed with a realtor, I contacted them. Um, like as, as a real estate agent, I actually pitched it to somebody else and they, they were like, Oh, it's too big or whatever. And I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> yeah, I might buy it though. So, and that, that's how I end up buying most stuff in, in Hamilton. It was like, Hey, uh, this is a really good deal. And they're like, man, I'm like, okay, if, well, listen, if you don't want it, I'm going to buy it. And some people thought that was a sales pitch. Other people were like, no, no, no. Yeah, go ahead, buy it. And I'm like, okay. So I, that's how I ended up buying most of my stuff is my clients yeah. had it under contract and then they wanted to back out and I'm like, God, oh, this is a good deal. I'm going to take it. So. I mean, and I think that's good too, because like, and I'm not saying that you would ever do this, but you know, it has happened to me in the past where a realtor <laughs> will like be shopping and trying to buy the exact same things that you're looking for. Um, and sometimes it's yeah. a conflict of interest and you have to really have to work with somebody who is going to give their clients first dibs on things if like if it's on the market right like off market stuff you know is a whole different story but stuff that's going on the market um you know through a realtor or whatnot like if you have a client like and you're taking it for yourself and the client is looking for the exact same thing i think that there's a little shadiness there but i i appreciate that you're you're mentioning that because it's it's happened before and it'll probably happen again where you know, you're competing with a, a realtor on the same property and then all of a sudden they take it and you don't have no idea. <laughs> yeah. And, and to be honest with you, I, I tell everyone, I'm like, listen, you, I, I'll sell it to you first. I'll miss out. There's so many properties. I'll get something that, that works for me eventually. And I'm fine with that. So, and again, mm -hmm. if I don't buy another property for six to 12 months, I'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Can I, so can I ask, cause I mean, obviously you were heavy in Ontario and, and, you know, now, now Alberta, uh, seems to be, you know, your choice market. Um, mm -hmm. just curious, like, I mean, probably obviously the landlord tenant rules, uh, are, are a factor that I would think, but like, what's your reasoning for, for going over to Alberta? Yeah. I mean, landlord tenant rules for sure. Um, Alberta, I can raise the rents, uh, once a year, as much as I want. Um, don't pay rent gone in two weeks. Uh, one of the biggest factors I like is, Hey, I rented to you for a year, but you know, really didn't like it. I didn't really like you. You're not a very good tenant. So we're just not going to renew your lease. So we're going to end our relationship. Please leave. Um, you know, so that forces them to be good. It also forces us to be good too, because it's more of a market economy, right? You actually want to keep tenants out there. Whereas in Ontario, you really you're like, oh, you're going to leave. See you later. Um, right. I'll rent it for a thousand dollars more than I did last year or whatever it is. Right. Um, 
so that aspect, but the, you know, one of the downsides to Alberta is they can build that much more and that much faster. Mm -hmm. uh, so they always have more supply coming on than, you know, Ontario, just because bureaucratic nightmares. Right. So that's why I still like Ontario. I mean, I think rents are going to be higher in Ontario in a year than they are today uh, in 10 years, you know, than they are today. So what I don't like is sometimes you got to buy it like a three cap mm -hmm. to, to buy those buildings. Right. So you're like a lot of money down. Um, it's a slower burr process uh, where I can burr most things in Alberta in 12 to 18 months. Nice. Yeah. I mean, like when you're looking at the lift, I guess it depends on like the person's primary reason for wanting to purchase, right? It, like, and you know, you're, you're in it a lot more, but when I was looking at it, like cash flow can be probably fairly similar anyways, but you know, you've got the ease um, of use. And cash flow is way better in, in, in Alberta. Alberta. For the, simple, for <laughs> yeah. the simple fact that you can get 95% um, financing, 50% amortization through MLI Select. Mm -hmm. And like they come in at value and they cash flow unbelievably. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So you're we're less money down. So you're higher cash on cash, right? Yeah, we're going. We're using it on our Hamilton building too. The MLI Select program. We're going through it, and that and that is awesome yeah. for like a commercial standpoint. Um, but you know, just like in regards to the lift, the rent increase year over year of like what's happened. Like, I mean, some markets have gone up like 15, 20 percent of rental. You know, yeah. <laughs> rental averages in different like the average market in Ontario. Um, and if yeah, you look yeah. over, I think like 10, 20 years, the lift in Ontario has, you know, done so much better than Alberta, well, but you know, you're, like... you're taking that and you're like, okay, well the LTB bullshit, um, and the whole like residential tendencies act in Ontario, like it really does suck, but you know, oh, is yeah. that worth or not worth the lift? Um, you know, and I think there's a lot of upside still in Ontario to be had. Um, Alberta is not a bad 100%. opportunity to diversify. I think you get the ease of use and maybe it's a bit of both right like what exactly what you're doing yep. yeah like out there you're not afraid to re to you know oh it's gonna i can get somebody in for 50 dollars less a month uh they can come in quick i'm not worried about doing that in ontario i would never do that in alberta i might do a six-month lease and say okay after six months we're going to raise it to market rent or whatever that is at that time mm -hmm. yeah and buying apartment buildings in Ontario and hoping that the tenants are going to leave like and trying to do cash for keys. I mean, this is also like the issue I have is, is cash for keys, you know, and, oh, yeah. and the tenants expecting this now because it's been, you know, done over and over and over. And I don't actually agree with it, but you know, how do you, for, for a multifamily, you know, with that 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 dollar cash for keys could be hundreds of thousands, depending on, you know, how much you can increase the net operating income. I've heard people like fifty to a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, it's nuts. Yeah, because nuts. if you can add four hundred thousand dollars to the value of your property just by putting a tenant in at market rent, yeah. why wouldn't you spend fifty thousand dollars? Yeah, no, it's it's crazy. But it also then they start talking, and then all of a sudden they're in these groups and you know, one person got 40, one person got 50, and then they're like extorting these landlords. <laughs> it's also 100%. like a catch 22. It's, it's, well, I mean, I mean, you do it to yourself, right? Like, uh, I don't think in Ontario, I ever paid more than $3,000. I just said, listen, I'll help you with moving expenses. If that's what you want, um, we're happy to do it. Mm -hmm. And I never paid more than that in Ontario. I know that I've, I, I just hear other people doing it. So. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. No, I like I have friends that have done it too. And they're like, well, I can justify it because that, you know, extra $20,000 is, you know, like it's like a couple hundred grand, <laughs> Yeah. you know, of increase. So, and that really, really that works better in the commercial realm. So, you know, from yeah. a duplex, triplex or whatnot, it's, it's not really like, it doesn't have the same lift in effect, obviously, because it's based on market comps, but yeah. What sure. like what actually makes sense? So let's just say Ontario, for example, like what types of properties today, you know, in 2023 at the time that we're talking about this actually still work for investors that you're seeing out there that you're helping investors acquire? I mean, we just did a deal on a triplex in Hamilton. Um, it needs obviously a bit of work, but it's 675 for a triplex. You can put a fourth unit in. There's a garage on site that you can probably do a, um, a like a, a suite. 
Uh, so you can get four or five units out of that property. He bought it for six seventy five, maybe he puts two hundred grand in, and you know he can probably rent that like just the four units in the house for I don't know what eight thousand dollars. Let's call it seven thousand dollars. He's all in for say nine hundred. I mean, I take seven thousand dollars in revenue off nine hundred thousand dollars all day long. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Right. Um, and I think once the rates start coming down a little bit too, like that lift should hopefully happen. Can't bank on it. You can't bank on appreciation, but you know, like rates are what, like <laughs> just an all time insane amount. So you're, you know, your purchase what are you price. talking about? I, they, they were higher when I started investing in real estate. 18% or know. whatever it was. Yeah. No, no I'm, I'm not, I'm not my parents. Jeez. No, but I, <laughs> my first mortgage was 7.35%. Okay. But that was off of probably what? A hundred thousand dollars. I think when you look at it relatively, your cost yeah. and like, like, you know, versus even just like the income from jobs and like the average household income, like we're actually, in my opinion, we're actually in a worse situation but today than you might've been even at 7% on 200 grand. <laughs> saying that though, rents are up like right. way more, True. right? Then, so if you're renting it, like, I mean, back then, like a one bedroom in, in Hamilton, we were pushing maybe, I don't know, for a nice one, 900, maybe a thousand if it was big, mm -hmm. 1200 for a two bedroom. Mm -hmm. Now in Hamilton, what do you get for one be bedroom? A couple grand. Depends on the location. Yeah. yeah. Two, and then a two bedroom, you're getting more, right? So I, I don't know. I, I, I think that apartment buildings, I think small multis, um, everyone was on the duplex conversion. I don't know that that's making financial sense right now. Mm -hmm. Um, but to buy something that's a bigger existing triplex and putting a fourth unit in or something like that with bill 23, I think it makes a lot of sense, but I still think, you know, be all and end all buy a concrete building in Ontario. You're going to do well. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, you gotta be patient. You gotta wait for tenant turnover. People leave, right? I had a building with a bunch of 80 year olds and they all left at some point. They went to nursing homes, they went other places. They left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They've been there for 30 years, but they're going to leave yeah. at some point. Yeah. And I do want to go back to your numbers. Like you're 675, you're putting 200K in, you're probably not ref like in this market, like your refis are going to come out like you're maybe in Hamilton as you're like your one mil ish, give or take. I, I just, you know, I've yeah, done a couple. I think you might get that. one, one on a fourplex. We just did a, we work. just did a couple and our mortgage or, um, our appraiser is like really trying to push what she can. But, um, again, location dependent, however, like those used to be 1.2 and they'll come back. I think at some point, right. It's just a matter of like, I think so. You know, the burrs of yesterday and the duplex, I do agree, the duplex conversions just don't work from a refinance standpoint. And like, I don't think that it's like, you can't expect to pull all your money out anymore on the refi. Yeah, it'll think, take a couple, think, couple refis. Yeah, I don't think everyone should. Like, I think that, you know, this project is going to be a nice double. Mm -hmm. right? It's not a home run, but like when back in the day, that's all we were looking for singles and doubles. Mm -hmm. enough singles and doubles you're in the hall of fame mm -hmm. yeah right if you try to hit a home run every time you probably strike out more than often than you you hit home runs or you just sit on the sidelines without yeah. taking any making any moves but i think really ultimately i think it is going to be about doing you know two refinances in your plan you know maybe once is like when when you're done and then once is a year from now, a year and a half from now, and, you know, should the rates come down and the markets go up again, nobody really knows truly what's going to happen. But, you know, once, once your, you know, market stabilizes a little bit more, there might be another refi to do if it makes sense. Um, so when I, when I was buying apartment buildings, I always had a, a five-year plan. So mm -hmm. one year I'd refinance after one year, I would typically take a two-year term after that. So I'd refinance again after three years. And then I would take another two year term and, and put it into CMHC after five years. And I take yeah, a long, -term, a good way to do it. long term mortgage. That is yeah. a good way to do it. You should, you should turn by that point, 75% of the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, if you're buying it, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about buying it with tenants already in it versus, yeah. you know, the decrepit condemned stuff that I like to. <laughs> well, that's I, what love I, was, those. I used to go, 
I used to go into places and say, listen, if you see crackheads, fire damage, um, quarter houses, you know, anything that you're afraid of, like, just, just call me, I'll, I'll buy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I used to get those deals all the time. They're great. They, um, you know, they're definitely, I think they're far and fewer between. However, there are some like areas in the downtown core of probably many municipalities that you can find that stuff, or there's, you know, a lot of commercial space that now is being open to being able to convert residentially because ultimately, like you said, it's yeah. supply and demand and there is definitely not a lot of supply and there's definitely not new things being built this the same extent that it needs to be. Um, and so I think, you know, today versus, you know, five years ago, even people are, or the cities are just more open to having these converted into residential spaces yeah. instead. So there's a great opportunity. What about Alberta? Like, what are you seeing works well in Alberta? Uh, two things. So you can just buy, if you're buying cheap enough and you're renovating, we, we do nice renovations out there. Um, and we're like, so first couple we bought we bought like 85 90 a door we put about thirty five thousand dollars into reno and we got refinanced one of them at 170 a door the other one at 190 a door into cmhc mm -hmm. um so we're not spending as much on the reno now we're not putting uh, laundry in which is like eight thousand dollars a unit out there just because of the electrical and plumbing um so we've kind of taken that out, but like, yeah, we're looking for refinance at 150 to 160 a door. And, you know, that's a lot of what we're doing. We can buy vacant buildings out there too, or get them vacant pretty quick. So we can go through and, and, and do that, or you can just buy it and, you know, you can turn it like the 90 unit, we're not going to get it vacant, but we have 40 vacant right now. Uh, we just renovated, finished renovating 13 of them. We've already got five of those filled. And we're inviting the other tenants that we like to move into some of the newer units and then we'll turn their units as well. But it's just, you know, it, you're just turning people over there. And then mm -hmm. like, if they don't, and we just say, Hey, listen, here's going to be the new rent for the building. If you want a new unit, you can pay that rent. If you want to stay in your unit, that's fine, but you're going to pay that rent when we're all done the renovation. That's amazing. I wish yeah. Ontario was like that, but again, pros and cons of each market. <laughs> but again, we're getting nine fifty to a thousand for a one bedroom unit. Right, right. We're getting twelve to thirteen hundred for a two bedroom unit. Right. It's yeah. But that's what happens when you have a market economy. Mm -hmm. Is that the market um, is allowed to make? It's basically a you know it goes up and it goes down with the market, which I think. You know, when you really look at it, even in the States, and you've probably looked at this in the past, but the ones that are free markets where the market dictates the rents are usually not going to be as high as when the government tries to intervene. And the areas where the government tries to intervene is actually like, I mean, Ontario, like BC is is very similar to that. This is where you see some crazy yep. high rents. Um, and oh, yeah. obviously less supply because there's less, you know, people that want to get into that market. Um, but there's also, you know, people are not moving because they move somewhere. Uh, and then all of a sudden, like, you know, something new is going to be uh, much, much higher. So like, you know, pros and cons, I truly believe you got to let the market do its thing. But I think we're so far in it that I don't even know how you get out of this one. Yeah, I don't know either. And there'd be no political will for sure either. Mm -hmm. Like that would, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Nova Scotia went that way too. They, they, they stopped, like they, they put a, in during COVID, mm -hmm. they put a, a rental cap on mm -hmm. and now it's to, until 2024. I was just talking to people at the multifamily conference this weekend and they're, they're out there and they're like, yep, yeah, till 2024, we can't raise the rents. Yeah. And they used to be free and open. Yeah, it's interesting. But um, look, at the end of the day, I believe investors are entrepreneurs at heart. And if what they're doing isn't going to work, they're going to pivot, they're going to find another way to do it, or they're going to take their money and they're going to invest it in a different country, a different area. Like, you know, there's always yeah, they're resource gonna become resources, private lenders, they're going to invest in dividend stocks. I mean, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I love real estate. I'm still, you know, a big proponent of it. I still think that it's you know, a great way to build wealth. And it's definitely a long-term situation. I don't think that doing it quickly, you know, in a couple of years is going to, you know, be where it was 
back in, you know, maybe 2020, um, unless you find like a really good, like building, you know, like some stuff off market or like, you know, you're, you're doing some, some good lift. Like, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it is a long-term situation or a long-term play. Well, I think in Ontario specifically that, uh, real estate is a network play a net worth play. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Alberta, it can be a, a cash flow play in the States. It can be a cash flow play. Right, right. Like you can just buy something for cash flow. In Ontario, yeah. that doesn't happen. You're just literally building your net worth in Ontario. Yeah, give or take. I, I think if you yeah. find the right building and you, and even just going through the you know the MLI program, like there are still some things I think that can still work, but it definitely mm -hmm. is few and further between. I don't think any singles or duplexes are gonna be <laughs> be uh you know the, the strategy of choice for the next little bit. Yeah. Um, the next part of the podcast is lightning rounds. So I'm going to ask you five questions. You can give me the first answer that comes to mind in like 10 seconds or less. You ready? Yep. All right. So here's question number one. What is your favorite real estate investing book? Uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. All right. Number two, not necessarily real estate related. Do you have a favorite podcast? Uh, I like the Goggins podcast. Okay. All right. Awesome. Number three, what do you do for fun? What do I do for fun? Um, hang out with my kids, go to CrossFit, run, um, golf. Uh, that's about it, really. I'm boring. Okay. No, I'm it's... on vacation. Cottage. Nice, nice. Awesome. Number four, if you lost everything tomorrow, all your assets, all your money, how would you start again? I would start joint venturing apartment buildings right away. All right. And last question. If somebody has $50,000 and they want to get started, how would you recommend they get started? I would recommend they get some education. So they take, I don't know, 20 to 50% of that and, and, and get, educa get educated. And then I would say to look at something where they could do an owner-occupied uh, property where they can put 5% down and maybe even get some cash back mortgage type thing and get into the market. All right. Thanks for playing the lightning round. Great answers. Mark, where can my listeners reach out and find out more? Yeah. Uh, so Instagram, uh, mark.loffler13 or on YouTube, the Mark Loffler experience is that's where I always am. So nice. Now you, you're still doing your YouTube show. Uh, I took a little bit of a hiatus, but it's coming back. Yes. All right. Very cool. So check that out on YouTube. Um, and the, uh, if somebody wants to reach out to you for, uh, like realtor help, like if they want you to help, uh, them buy a property, yep. is that still the best way as well? Yep. Best way is through Instagram. Okay. All right. Awesome. Hopefully your Instagram does not get hacked and deleted because that happened to mine once. <laughs> Oh, my, that happened to my Facebook, not to, not to Insta yet. So no, okay, good, good. Awesome. Well, Mark, thank you so much for being on the show. Pleasure having you on. And I guess I'll see you at CrossFit at some point when I'm back down in Oakville. All right. Sounds good. Thanks so much for listening to where should I invest with your host, Sarah Larby. Make sure to listen in next time. We'll catch you on the next episode of where should I invest?